Greetings. Greetings from the Association of TYTCI Anesthesiologists. Respected senior members, dear colleagues, and my dear friends. It's humbling to see all of you in such large numbers this Sunday. Before we delve into the topic of the day, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce the members of the Association of Tiva TCI, which was launched at GAG 2024 Coimbatore. Under the able leadership and guidance of Dr. Bala Venkat, Dr. Sunil Pandya, Dr. Karuna Karan, and Dr. Tushar Choksi, we formulated the society with some of the most dynamic personalities. We have as our president, Dr. Subramaniam Mahakali, as our Vice President, Dr. Shishir Chandra Shekhar, Dr. Shiv Kumar as our Secretary, and Dr. Dheeraj Masupa as a Treasurer, with the Governing Council members being Dr. Nishant, Dr. Vivek, Dr. Prasanna, and myself. The leadership of uh, Association of TBAR TCI has dedicated to advancing the medical knowledge and has been instrumental to bring about its first webinar series to you today. May I now request our president, Dr. Subramaniam, to introduce today's dynamic speaker, Dr. K. Karunakaran. Over to you, Dr. Subramaniam. Thank you, Dr. Kalpana. Uh, thank you for being uh, accepting to be the host for the IOTA, web IOTA webinar series. Uh, uh, I'm really thankful to all my um, IOTA colleagues uh, for coming together. For those of you who are new to this uh, organization, you know, for the last nearly two and a half, three years now, so we have been getting together in one form or the other, and we started a series of workshops on TCI and TIVA in a lot of state and national conferences. But uh, you know, we were thinking, you know, we were organizing these workshops why don't we get together and start a society and make it promote it and make it safer so that it can reach every part of the country? Uh, and this dream of us came together and we came together and started our society at the GAC 2024. Now, one way of reaching to everyone uh, wherever they are is through this uh, digital media. I'm happy that Kalpana has uh, accepted to be our host and we are starting our webinar series. And this series, we hope to have at least a minimum of one webinar uh, a month. Uh, and uh, this focus on various aspects of uh, you know, uh, delicacies or I mean, uh, intricacies of uh, uh, target controlled infusion, uh, TCI, and how to use the various drugs. Now, we all know that Remifentanil has just been launched in India, and it is becoming available in almost every corner of the country. Now, this is the right time we thought we would come together and organize a, a webinar in which we learn from the people who have been using it for the last two decades. Uh, in that, what we have today is uh, you know, a wonderful guest, uh, a good friend, and who has trained in India, who has trained in UK, worked as a consultant in UK, and as well as now he's working at um, uh, uh, Sidra Hospital, uh, uh, Qatar. So he's a very dynamic personality, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, 
that we cannot ask a, a better speaker than him to introduce this topic to us uh, I, you know as you know you will uh, as you go through you will understand that he will put things so simple so straightforward and to the point that every one of you will like it so uh, thank you dr karuna karan ramaswamy uh, uh, jo for joining us from qatar on a sunday evening uh, we really are uh, very glad and proud to have you uh, and uh, that is our karuna karan ramaswamy before you hand, hand over the stage, uh, uh, after Dr. Karuna Karan's talk, we have another interesting talk. Uh, the, the, we have, uh, no, the Themis Medicare has come and partnered with us in partnership with them. Uh, they, one of their uh, directors of medical, they will join us to present, uh, uh, you know, something unique about the, what is unique about this uh, uh, molecule of uh, uh, no, uh, remifentanil and how to procure it in different parts of the India. Thank you all. Enjoy this webinar. And I look forward to, uh, you know, uh, uh, get your feedback from you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Subramaniam and Dr. Kalpana for the kind introduction. Uh, may Lord Rama bless you all and may IOTA reach the greatest heights and be famous worldwide. Uh, I'm really glad to say this is the third uh, TWA association in the whole world. Uh, so Indians must be really, really proud today and uh, uh, we should be able to achieve great heights. Uh, I do not have any financial disclosures. Uh, however, I would like to acknowledge the help I received in, in this presentation from Dr. Anup Biswas, who is a good colleague and also very uh, expert in TCI-TY and all the executive measure members of IOTA. Uh, they've had a look at this presentation and they've contributed. So thank you so much. Uh, this is going to be a very hands-on practical presentation, uh, not much theories. If you want any theoretical aspects, please do get in touch with us and we'll go through. So how many of you remember what is this? It takes some time, isn't it, to, to understand. You may have uh, had bundles of these before, but it takes some time to realize what this was. And if I had said a few years ago, this is all going to be replaced by this, uh, you would not believe me. You would say you, you are an idiot and how can this be replaced? But it's happened. Uh, we, we even take some time to recognize what these notes are. Uh, similarly, anesthesia is getting revolutionized and TIVA, TCI is going to take over slowly and this is going to be the future. TCI with regional is going to be the future of anesthesia and India um, is in a very pivotal position because we have launched IOTA. We got a society which is actually looking into it and trying to train people all over India. So please, please, especially registrars, trainees, postgraduates, um, DNB candidates, and those who are in academic institutes, please do join this institute. Ample, ample opportunities for research, publications, posters, presentations worldwide. The field is empty. The field is yours. Please grab the opportunity. Use it wisely. Okay, so without further ado, let us uh, go on to start. Why do we need another? We are giving anesthesia already. Yeah? You are all experts in providing anesthesia. Why do you need yet another molecule? Why do you need an, yet another thing in your armamentarium? You know, when you used to go for viva in your uh, anesthesia exams, one of the things which is asked is, describe an ideal anesthetic, describe an ideal anes analgesic. And... Remy fits this bill almost similar. In fact, there is research happening to find a very similar an anesthetic agent because it is so good. So the onset is quick. The offset is quick within minutes. When I say quick, so onset is within a minute. Offset is within a couple of minutes. It is safe in renal patients. It's safe in hepatic impairment because it gets metabolized by ester hydrolysis. It gives you excellent control of blood pressure and heart rate. And I'll tell you where all we can use this very wisely. So you must have heard of railway track or pram track where they are running parallel to each other. Your blood pressure, uh, so, you know, systolic and diastolic will look, look almost like this tram track, okay? Like this railway track. So that, that's how good the control will be. It markedly reduces the use of your anesthetic agent and relaxant use, especially where you would like to avoid relaxant. This is fantastic as it's a very good airway suppressant and the side effects are really transient. Uh, it's got almost three decades of experience now, uh, fairly safe drug to use. And we are always shy to talk about finance. 
uh, each minute of OR costs about 1,000 to 1,500 rupees. So if you can improve the turnaround, if you can improve our efficiency, why not? Uh, we should. Instead of doing six patients, if you can do seven patients in a day, that is good for patients, that's good for the hospital, that's good for you. So there are numerous reasons why we should use. Only one slide about pharmacokinetics, uh, mainly for trainees, so it's very strong mu receptor agonist. Uh, it's almost 200 times more potent than morphine, almost two to three times more potent than fentanyl. So it's, it's quite a potent uh, mu receptor agonist. And the distribution between plasma and effect is within a minute or a minute and a half. So very, very quick, quick onset. So the onset of action is extremely quick. And the metabolism is the cherry on top of the cake. It's by esterhydrolysis, which means within four minutes to five minutes, However long your infection rate is, it's gone from the patient. It's gone from the system and your patient will wake up. So very, very good. And the metabolites are not active. So you can use it in renal patients. You can use in hepatic failure patients. And you can use in pseudocholine stress deficiency patients. So this is a background why uh, we may think of adapting remifentanil. So without further ado, let me go into practical aspect. So if you get a vial of remifentanil, how are you going to use it in a patient? So... In India, it's going to be available as one milligram and two milligram vial. Please ignore the five milligram. It is available worldwide, but in India, you're going to get one milligram vial and two milligram vial. How will you know which one to buy? So roughly, as a rough ballpoint, you will need about a milligram of remifentanil per hour. So if you're, you know, if your case is for two hours, maybe two milligram vial is a good one. Or if it's longer, then you go for a bigger vial. Okay, so I think that gives you like a rough ballpoint what to do. So you guys, you buy this powder, how are you going to use it? How are you going to dilute? So it is dissolved in normal saline. So we use normal saline or distilled water. We use normal saline. It works perfectly well. Because it's a new molecule, please make it a habit. We just launched the Patient Safety Foundation also. S safety, we promote safety even in our association. So start diluting in standard concentration. I think that's the rule number one we have to learn always dilute to 50 microgram per mil. So once you start doing this, uh, the number of errors straight away come, come down because everyone is doing exactly the same. So how do you do that? So if you buy a one milligram vial, dilute with 20 ml of saline. So that gives you 50 micrograms. If you buy two milligrams, then you dilute in 40 ml. So we'll go through this once again, just so that it recaps. And IOTA has kindly agreed to uh, send, you know, all these slides, they made it into a little booklet. It will be sent as a PDF to you guys. So you will have all this on your mobile uh, for re ready reference. So one milligram 20, two milligrams 40. So that's a standard standard way of diluting. So then I've said label as soon as you dilute. Um, it's interesting I say this because just day before yesterday, what happened? I got called as emergency. They said, KK, come urgent. Uh, we are giving so much Narad patient is not responding. So I go, First thing I notice is there is an unopened ampule of noradrenaline sitting on the machine. So as them have really diluted, so just the label is there. They're giving saline uh, with noradrenaline not in there. So this happens very, very frequently. Uh, it's very common. So please be careful. So make sure you dilute and label immediately. Uh, whatever color coding you use, this is the color coding we are using. It's worldwide standard. So please adapt and uh, start using this. So label as soon as you dilute. Uh, either way, it's important. So saline is good. And if you put Remy and if you don't label, again, it's equally dangerous. So please make sure you dilute and label it immediately. Is that okay? So you've done the dilution. you got a syringe of Remy fentanyl. What are you going to do now? Uh, how are you going to infuse? So uh, I've said infusion only. Remy fentanyl is a very potent medication. Uh, please don't use it as a bolus. Just use morphine or fentanyl. Please use it as infusion only. Uh, I'm going to talk about two ways of giving it. If you have a TCI pump, how can you use it? Uh, if you have a normal infusion pump, so you don't have a TCI pump in your hospital, that's absolutely fine. You can use a normal infusion pump and we'll go through how you can use remifentanil infusion. All right. So when we talk about TCI or TIVA, people get worried. Oh my God, I've gone through the pharmacokinetics. What is first compartment, second compartment? You know, people get really worried. This is where artificial intelligence, you know, we talk about AI and immediately we think about a robot. No, AI has really made huge, huge improvements in the field of infusion technology. And it's going to be very significant even in future. Uh, we are getting close to but things like that. 
all these models are built in. It's almost like a GPS. You say, I want to go here and the maps automatically take you. So it's exactly like that when you put a uh, patient demographics and tell exactly what you want to achieve, the machine will do all the calculations for you. It's really, really as simple as that. So TCI will be the future. So please do adapt. So how do you set up? So you you guys are really state of the art pump. I've seen you got the nice touch screen, fancy pumps. What I have is a really, really old pump. Uh, I'm trying not to show the pump, but it's very old, uh, outdated. But uh, I'm trying. Uh, when I set up, it takes less than 30, 40 seconds. I have a video in the end. It doesn't take long to set up a TCI pump. So make sure what is there in the pump is actually remifentanil and select remifentanil TCI. So that's the first step. So that you are starting remifentanil as TCI. Make sure there is remifentanil in the syringe inside. Uh, please don't put propofol and select remifentanil. That, that, that's uh, not good. So that is step number one. And the standard dilution, which we already talked about is, so in between, I'm going to ask questions and just try to answer in your head. I know we are in a Zoom and we will not be able to speak to each other. At least try to answer in your head. So it's 50 microgram. So you see that there is a 20 microgram above. We don't use that anymore, even for pediatrics. It used to be in olden days when they were trying to uh, have spontaneous ventilation. That's almost outdated. I think in new pumps, we will not have that anymore. So standard is 50 micrograms per mil. So step one is TCRME. Step two is 50 micrograms. And third is you have to choose whether you want effect mode or plasma mode. This is the third one. Uh, all it means is plasma means what is the concentration in plasma? And effect means, can you see the picture of the brain? These are the mu receptors which are available in the brain. So this is the concentration of remifentanil in the brain which you are going to have. All right. So that is what effect mode really means. This is exactly what we want to know. What is the concentration of remifentanil in the brain? And this is what you are going to set for. Is that all right? So these are the first T steps. So you choose remi, um, you choose 50 max per mil, and you choose effect mode. So then it's going to ask you for four things, um, four demographic details. I think it is important to know this because so recently, again, uh, we, we teach a lot of trainees and they had a trainee. You know, they're very, very particular. They want particular dress, particular shoes, you know, even the coffee, they want it in a particular way. When it comes to providing anesthesia, it's like one ampule anesthesia. So I said, oh, I'll drop the medications for you. Uh, how much propofol would you like? One ampule. How much rocuronium? One ampule. How much on on one ampule? Uh, you ask anything, they will say one ampule of everything when it comes to adult. And I think we need to move away. And this is the first step to go towards patient specific anesthesia. So it's going to ask you, what is the patient type? Right? So at least you start looking at these things. So it's going to ask the patient's gender. Hopefully, look at this. And next is what's the patient's weight and what's the patient's age. So using these four, the models are already built in the pump. So for a particular weight, particular height, that calculates its BMI and for the gender, and it's already calculating. So if you tell this is the target I want to achieve, the machine, the pump will already do the calculations using AI. So you don't have to use your brain, just like the vaporizer, you turn it to two or three percent. This is exactly the same, not at all different, but it's more specific for this particular patient. And the future is going to be even more specific with, with the closed loop uh, systems. So this is how you set up. And I'll show you a video in the end. To do this, I've taken some time to explain, but it literally takes 30, 40 seconds, not more than that, once you get used to your pumps. So this is the concentration which is going to be in the brain. And it's very easy to increase or decrease. There is an arrow to press up, you increase. If you want to decrease, you press the down arrow, it will decrease. All right? So this is about TCA. What's the advantage uh, of using TCA? So, I've been talking for some time. Uh, let me take a break. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Just think through in your brain uh, what we have talked about. So it's like a feedback loop. So what is the concentration of remifentanil available in India? Uh, what's the dose which is available? Yes, it's one and two milligrams. What is the standard concentration you're going to dilute it to? 50 micrograms per mil. If it's a one milligram, you dilute it with 20 ml normal saline. If it's a two milligram, correct, you dilute it with 40 ml. Okay, so that gives you a standard concentration of 50 max. All right, okay, great. So you're done this. What are the four demographics the machine is going to ask you? It's going to ask you for the patient's height, weight, gender, and age. 
so that it can do the appropriate calculation. So this is very, very basic of how to set up a TCI, all right? So next thing it's going to ask you is which model would you like? Remy Fentanyl in India has only two models. One is Minto. Eleveld is going to come in the new, new, newer pumps, all right? So we used to have Minto. What is the advantage and disadvantage of Minto is it's available only from 12 to 90 years of age or 30 kilograms and above. Uh, so pediatric patients were not getting benefit of TCI before. Whereas Eleveld is available from age of one all the way up to 99. So even pediatric patients are going to get benefited from this. So in future, you will be getting Eleveld and I think most pumps will slowly move towards Eleveld model uh, because it incorporates a much wider age and range. All right. So you have done this. You selected, let us say, a level. How are you going to start? So now you have a patient on table. Um, what I generally suggest is set all the pump details. So you will have all the demographic details. You know which patient is going to come to OR. Set your pump before the patient arrives. So everything is ready. So when the patient comes, your pump is ready to go. Just like you drop other medications, make it a habit so that everything is ready. So you all do WHO checklist. Who checklist? Don't ask me who is who. Yes, you do WHO checklist. Fantastic. So uh, connect the pump. As soon as you confirm this is the correct patient, while you're going through the rest of your who checklist, because remifentanil is a new drug in India, we I really don't know how your patients are going to respond. I'm going to stay start with lower concentration, one to two nanograms. And put it in bracket again. So the pump will show it as nanograms because it's a quite a potent drug, yeah? So start with one to two nanogram per mil uh, and continue with your WHO checklist. What is the advantage of this? See, A, your patient starts getting nice and relaxed. By the time you finish your WHO checklist, your patient is already nice and relaxed, number one. Second is, I always advocate, give the patient the mask. They know how to breathe. They've been breathing all their life. Just give the switch on the oxygen, give the mask, ask them to hold and breathe. Uh, we don't have to, you know, the minute we become anesthetists, we think we have to stand on top of the head and hold the mask, only then patient gets pre-oxygenated. No, it's all, actually, it looks like Emadar Maraya or Emadar Maraya. If you, if you just lie down and ask one of your colleagues to hold the mask, it looks pretty scary when you're lying from that age. So just give the mask so they are pre-oxygenated. By the time you finish your WHO checklist, they're breathing, they're pre-oxygenated, they're nice and relaxed. All right? So this has happened. Once you're done that, then when the WHO check is done, so within a minute and the Remy will start working. So it's, it's very, very quick. Then for your induction, you increase it to four to five nanograms per ml. All right. Is this okay? So during your WHO checklist, you start with one to two nanogram. When you're about to induce your patient, this is Remy fentanyl, increase from four to five nanograms. So the machine will give a small bolus to get this concentration up. So the machine is doing all the work. Just like your GPS, you select one, then you go to four or five, all right? So this is your induction. So you can do your airway, whether it's supraglottic airway or intubation, whatever you wish to do, this can be done with this concentration. What you will notice is your hemodynamic stability will be amazing. You know, usually when we do a laryngoscopy, it's almost like, you know, we don't look at the heart rate, we don't look at the blood pressure, we kind of hide it. With remifentanil, it's extremely stable. The, 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 the sympathetic response is really, really well controlled with this. All right. So once you finish the induction, once your airway is secure, uh, usually the surgeons take some time. You know, they prep, they drape, and, you know, they take three to four minutes. You can reduce it again to two or three just to save some remifentanil, save some money. Uh, and again, go back to your intraoperative dose, which is usually four to six. That's the dose you will need. We'll see about uh, nociceptive uh, monitoring in the next uh, slide, but usual intraoperative dose, what you will need is between four to six. So you start with four. Most patients are usually okay with four, four nanograms. All right. If the surgical stimulus is more intense, you can increase it to five or you can come back to four. So these are the three numbers you, you need to know. So let's just go through this again. When you start your W with one to two nanogram, let the patient pre-oxygenate. For induction, increase to four to five nanograms. And after induction, you can reduce. And intraoperative dose you need again is four to six nanograms. Fairly easy to remember, yeah? Again, it's there in the booklet. Please don't worry, okay? So advantage of TCI is 
it's already pre-calculated. You don't have to worry about patient's age, patient's why this patient is elderly, can I give this much? The machine already accommodates for all those things. That's the great advantage of using TCM. Uh, I, and it, the ability, suppose you want to, the surgeon is uh, giving more stimulus, you want to increase, the machine delivers the bolus to get to that level within one and one and a half minutes. You get to that level very, very quickly. There are lots of nociceptive monitoring available. Some use pupils, some use skin, some use sympathetic response. I know there is some, some of these available in some Indian institutes. I said four to six. If you have this monitoring, you can be a lot more specific uh, if you have this. Otherwise, definitely use four to six. Okay. So I think we anesthesia, we are really, really good at adapting new technologies. I know, uh, uh, let us say anesthesia and propofol came, we adapted when dexmedetomidine came, we adapted, I mean, ultrasound guided regional anesthesia, we adapted quickly, uh, or focus, we have adapted very quickly. Even in life, when a new model of phone comes or a new model of car, whatever, we, you know, pass or whatever, we, we adapt very quickly. I think the only thing we don't change or we don't uh, change is our uh, life partner. You know, we, we stay with the same partner, even if there is a better model next to us, we don't bother to look, we don't dare to look rather. Uh, it's not just one genma, it's uh, for next seven genma, uh, we, you know, sat sat janam, so we stay with them. And when someone says sat sat, you have to be careful, is it addition, is it seven plus seven or multiplication seven into seven or is it seven to the power of seven? It can be quite dangerous. So um, just to break the monotony, don't worry. Um, so we are good at adapting systems. So if we can adapt TCI, great. So if you have a TCI pump, this is all you need to do. It takes 30 to 40 seconds to set up. Start with one to two, increase to four to five for induction. Again, continue four to five for maintenance. Easy to remember, easy to do. Machine is doing all the calculations for various age and various heights, okay? Next, not everyone has a TCI pump. Uh, we get that and that's absolutely fine. Can we use remifentanil if we don't have a TCA pump? Yes, you can. So I'm going to talk about two ways of actually using uh, this. So number one is you can use it as ML per hour. This is the safest way and this is the recommended way of using it. Before TCA came, we used to use as microgram per kg per minute. I have seen so many errors with this, so many. So people are writing as milligram or by accidentally setting it up. Can you imagine the disaster? Instead of microgram, if you put milligram, some people put nanogram. So there is lots of errors. Please don't use this. Go to ml per hour. How do you know how many mls to give? So just multiply patient's weight into 0.12. That gives the rough dose of 0.1 microgram per kg per minute. So let give let me give an example of 70 kg person. 70 into 0.12 is 8.4 ml. So that is what is 0.1 microgram per kg. So you can start with this. Uh, while doing a WHO checklist. And when the surgical stimulus is about to start, two, three minutes before that, increase to 0.2 or 0.3. So uh, for a 70 kg man, I said 0.1 is 8.4. 0.2 will be 8.4 plus 8.4, which is 16.8 ml. Is that clear? If you want to increase to 0.3, it is three times of 8.4. So it's as simple as that. If it's 50 kg, it's multiplied by 0.12. This will give you in ml per hour. So the chances of you making an error are very, very less. And what you can see is usually it's between 10 to 20 ml, uh, less than, it's around that rate. If you're getting more than that, you're making some mistakes. So that is one way is running it as ml per hour. So you may think, oh, why should I buy an infusion pump? Most infusion pumps in India are cheaper than the mobile phones you have in your pocket. It's not expensive. Please don't, I've, I've come to, I've visited many stalls, infusion pumps, just volumetric infusion pumps are extremely cheap in India. It is cheaper than your mobile phones. You can easily afford and buy that. It, it will make a hell of a difference. There is another way of using it if you don't have a TCA pump. So you all have a mobile phone, yeah? So these are the apps which are available. They are available in Android. They are available in Windows. They are available in Mac, all three. So you can download one of these apps. You remember I told the four demographic details. Do you remember those? Patient's height, patient's weight, age, and gender. You put that, put Remy Fentanyl. These are all training apps. Right? You can use it for training. So even without a patient, you can practice. But you put those demographics. 
this will run a Remy Fentanyl Tiva for you on your mobile. You can copy the ML which it is showing and run it with your normal infusion pump. This is called as a passive TCA because you don't have a TCA pump. You have a normal pump, but you can see how much ML it's asking you to inf infuse on this app and you can use it in your normal pump. So either you can use the first formula I told you, which is multiply body weight into 0.12, correct. Okay, so use that or you can use one of these apps. And this is fantastic for practicing. Guys, when you don't have Remy Fentanyl, you can just download these apps. This is good for Propofol, Remy, Dexmed, Ketamine, all. So you have all these in these apps. So please do use these apps. They're really good. And last, I put a safety thing. I know Dr. Kalpana is going to give a talk on safety of TCI. Please make sure if feasible, you keep cannula in view and make sure a anti-reflex valve is there for the fluid. Okay, good. So let's come to even more. So we started about how to dilute, how to set up the pump, whether you are TCI or no TCI, how to maintain. So it's like flight pre-check is done, takeoff has happened, flight is going. So then we look at what are the problems you can have and how we are going to land safely, how to land safely. So uh, what are the side effects? Uh, ultra short acting, which means within two minutes, whatever side effect is there is going to go away. So please don't panic. It will self-limiting usually. Two common side effects I want you to remember. Number one is bradycardia. Especially in elderly, somebody is on beta blocker or if you are using dexmeditomidin. I know dexmed is being used very, very commonly in India. This is the reason I'm specifically mentioning that. Both of these cause bradycardia. So especially if you're giving boluses, please be careful. Please don't do that. I think when you start using Remy, it's worth keeping some atropine or glyco next to you till you get hang of how to use this. Once you're happy with how to use this, then it's okay. But beginning, definitely keep it handy. You get pre, you know, ready-made syringes, so it's, it's fairly cheap. Second is apnea. Uh, Remy fentanyl is a really good respiratory depressant, which means Patients will tolerate the endotracheal tube without muscle relaxants. They will not cough or buck. They will tolerate your supraglottic airway well, but they will not breathe. They will just sit there. You ask them to breathe, they will breathe. Otherwise, they will just sit there, stare at you without breathing. So pre-oxygenation is absolutely crucial. Please, please make sure this is done. And if you're using a supraglottic airway, please choose ventilation. Don't let them breathe spontaneously. They will just struggle. You will just start accumulating CO2. Use ventilation. Almost all patients will breathe. Don't worry about it. Unless we, you know, they will breathe when you stop Remy. Within one or two minutes, they will start breathing. So please don't worry. Ventilate, control ventilation. It gives you a much, much smoother experience. Hypotension is only if you have other hypotensive agents. Otherwise, it's fairly stable. So bradycardia, apnea. These are the two, um, you know, big side effects. Uh, it will be reversed with naloxone or atropine. Very, very quick. It, it it will disappear within a minute or two. It doesn't take longer than that. I'm going to talk about flushing the line before leaving. Uh, I'm putting it here again. Uh, we should make it a habit. It's not just with Remy fentanyl. Uh, every patient IV cannula should be flushed before leaving OT. Whatever you do, whether you use Remy or not, but especially with Remy, because if you send a patient, especially children to PACU, uh, you will get an alarm saying they are stopped breathing. This is a common. Uh, issue. So please make sure you flush the line when you are under control before you move them up. All right. Action. So now we talked about takeoff. We talked about maintenance, four to five uh, nanograms per mil. Now we are going to see how to stop Remy fentanyl, how to line the land the flight safely. Okay. One of the commonest problems with Remy is it's fantastic analytics. I said you're going to get like a tram track or railway track appearance. But when you stop, the analgesia is gone. Within three to four minutes, the, if you are not given long-acting pain relief, patient is going to be in agony. So 15, 10 to 15 minutes before the surgeon finishes, uh, use local anesthetic, give it to the surgeon. They can infiltrate under direct vision. Cheapest, easiest, most efficient way. Uh, works really well. Give it to the surgeon. Teach them where to infiltrate. They will infiltrate. I'm a big fan of ultrasound guided regional blocks. Uh, again, definitely fantastic way of controlling pain. Uh, use regular analgesics. If you're a fan of adjuvants or fan of uh, uh, you know non-opiate analgesics, magnesium, ketamine, they're all fantastic adjuvants. Please do use. Uh, if you do want to use opiates, again, uh, you know, there is an opioid pandemic going on. 
try to use short acting, something like fentanyl instead of using long acting opioids. Uh, and that should be the last, last resort. Uh, this should be your first resort. This is absolutely crucial. Uh, very important. You do this at least 15 minutes before you stop Remy. So that these things, are, they take 10 to 15 minutes to work. So this is important. All right. So I'm showing, going to show you only one graph. A lot of people ask why I should go to Remy from fentanyl. I'm very happy with dexmedetomidine. Uh, this graph should explain that. So on your y-axis, you have what is called as context-sensitive half-time, which means if you're running an infusion, if you stop just now, how long will your patient take to wake up, which is the concentration will reduce by 50. That's what context is, all right? And on the y-axis bottom, you have how many hours. So here we are infusing something for eight hours, okay? Eight hours duration. Look at the bottom most graph with the red arrow. That is Remy fentanyl. Even if you run it for eight hours, suppose you have a neurosurgery, cardiac, transplant, you know, big spine case, polyosis case, whatever. Even if you run it for eight hours, you stop and within four to five minutes, it's terminal half-life, not even context sensitive, terminal half-life, which means the Remy fentanyl is out of the patient. It's out of the system. So for long cases, absolutely brilliant. See what happens with fentanyl, which is this blue arrow and dexmedetomidine. As soon as you approach one hour, you can see the contact sensitive, which means the patients will not wake up quick. Uh, you may have to even leave them intubated and extubate them, you know, two or three hours later. So uh, if you use dexmedetomidine, most of you are using UC. Once you start using infusion after half an hour, 40 minutes, they start, they're still drowsy. They, when they wake up, they're still drowsy. Whereas with Remy, they're so clear headed, you can extubate and you can move on. All right. So this is important graph. Look why Remy fentanyl scores over Dexmed or fentanyl. Uh, this is this is the main. So where can you use? Do you have to use it for all patients? No need. You don't have to start using Remy fentanyl for all patients. There are clear areas where this is going to be extremely useful. Number one, where you want uh, hypotensive anesthesia, where you know surgeons are using endoscopic surgery. Uh, they will fall in love with you, especially in ENT, mid-layer surgeries, TORP, spine surgeons. Uh, they will really, really uh, love you when you do this. Neurosurgeons, again, they will like this. Uh, where you don't want to use muscle relaxants at all, like scoliosis surgery, uh, salivary glands, where they are going to use nerve stimulator, make sure they're not injuring any nerves. You can intubate with Remy. You can maintain with Remy. You don't have to use muscle relaxant at all. A uh, patient will tolerate the tube very well if you're using Remy fentanyl. Laparoscopic, I especially mentioned because in laparoscopy, the stimulus is intense when the surgeon is doing laparoscopic surgery. But once the surgery is finished, there is hardly any stimulus, especially if you infiltrate well uh, for the camera port, the pain is very, very minimal. Uh, whereas during the surgery, it's intense. This is ideal. When you need, you get intense analgesia when they're operating. The minute when they finish operating, you can switch off Remy and go to your alternative analgesics. This is final. You, you can extubate and, you know, however long your surgery is, it's great. And you can use it in most surgery, especially transplant. It's going to be a big boon because um, they have hepatic coronal issues. Fiber optic intubation and airway surgeries, it's a fantastic uh, respiratory suppression, which means they will tolerate the tube or your bronchoscopes really, really well. Uh, you know, we talked about opioid pandemic. If you want to avoid, because in TROP, if you're using a short-acting opioid, post-op analgesia, you can easily manage with regional or simple analgesics. Most of the time, you can get away without using long-acting opioids. So for opioid pandemic and OFA, which is going to be another talk, this is useful. And last is you save a lot of money. Uh, imagine uh, when the surgeon finishes, you transfer the patient, you can most of the time extubate on table with TCI, TIVA or you know, you can, you're pretty much going out with the surgeon. Uh, what are the advantages? So, as I already mentioned, you can do more number of cases. Your theater efficiency is much better. Uh, number two, uh, very important for us is you can have a nice cup of coffee along with the surgeon when they are doing their notes. Uh, important to look after ourselves. So, uh, especially long surgeries where you struggle to extubate, this is going to be a big boon. So, this is where Remy will be very useful. You don't have to use it for all patients, but I think these specific group of patients, it's going to be a big boon. For short cases, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it really does not make a big difference. It's mainly for something which is more than hour or 90 minutes. Uh, very quick video. I'm sorry. Just to show that it doesn't take long. I'm just setting up. This is a very old pump. You guys have touchscreen pumps. 
So I'm setting up TCRM fentanyl, going to 50 microgram per mil, choosing effect mode, patient's height in meters. Just to show that this does not take long. So I'm selecting the gender now, confirming. I, we have to confirm everything. What is patient's weight? So I think this patient was 90 kilos, and that's it. And I'm confirming again. What is the patient's age? And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how long it is going to take. Okay, it does not take long to set up. So I took long time to explain the set, but this is this is pretty much all that's going to happen. Okay. So uh, nearly end. These are the take home points. Just recap in your head. So your Remy is available as one milligram and two milligram powder in India. You dilute it with normal saline or distilled water. Standard concentration is 50 micrograms. One milligram is 20 ml. Two milligrams is 40 ml. Always use as infusion. No bolusing. Uh, it's very powerful. It will cause apnea or bradycardia. If you can manage that, that's great. Uh, because that's what the TCA machine also does. But if your boluses, it has to be small boluses. Not, you know, not like what you give with fentanyl or morphine. Uh, TCI is ideal. Otherwise, we talked about how to use it as a normal infusion pump. Usual, start with one. For induction, go to four or five. Maintenance is four to six. You can choose mentor or LFL, whatever is available with you. Please make sure you, you can see the IV access. Whenever it's feasible, ensure there's an anti-reflex wall. Commonest side effects, even though they're transient, is bradycardia. Bradycardia and apnea. These are the two commonest side effects. Please be prepared for this. Flush the line before they go to OR. Last point is extremely important because we are not used to this. Please remember to give long-acting analgesia before you send them back. Uh, otherwise, patient will be in pain. Don't blame the medication. You have to give the analgesia well in time. Uh, it does not cause uh, hyperalgesia or anything like that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dr. Karanakaran Ramaswamy. Thank you very much. You know, uh, you know, I while introducing Dr. Karanakaran, I didn't say a few things because you practically have experienced how good a communicator he is. Uh, uh, he has not only the degrees in medicine, he also has degrees in MBA and communication and uh, adaption of uh, uh, artificial intelligence as well. Dr. KK, uh, we are uh, very thankful to have you here. There are a few questions on your way. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Kalpana might have noted. Uh, Dr. Kalpana, you have any questions to uh, noted for Dr. KK from the uh, group chats? I think you go ahead with yours and I'll just come back to you on the same. Uh, Dr. Dr. Yes. Karunakar, I uh, want to yes. ask one thing. Now, uh, most of us uh, have started to use uh, TCI propofol as well. Let's say yeah. if you want to start using TCI propofol and remifentanil or okay. remifentanil infusion, uh, which one would you start first or how, how should we go about I would start remifentanil first and then profolite with propofol. The reason I'm saying this is one, uh, propofol when you start causes pain. We all know that when we infuse propofol, it causes pain. Remifentanil masks that pain. So that is one. Uh, so start remifentanil one to two nanograms. Uh, within one minute, you can start propofol immediately. So it avoids the pain. So uh, what level of target would you achieve of uh, remi before you starting propofol? Uh, two nanograms is fine. Two nanograms is fine. So, yeah. so uh, as I said, WHO check, even propofol, uh, just the way we start remifentanil slowly, I also advocate to start propofol slowly. Start with one nanogram. See how your patients respond. Because uh, every state I visited in India, patients respond differently. So true. Uh, so true. Absolutely. So someone in Andhra will tolerate probably more compared to someone in Gujarat. Totally different. Because Gujarat are vegetarians, they're teetotalers, they don't drink, they respond very, very differently. So always start low. Uh, within one minute, you will know how the patient is going to respond and then you increase your dose to your induction dose. Uh, now, uh, so if I'm not wrong, I'll just re recapitulate. Uh, that you. we'll start with one, go up to two, and then start propofol. Propofol, what would you start up with? We start with 0.5 or 1? No, no, you what can you start with you one again. Uh, same, you start with one. Uh, once you're happy how your patient responds, you can go up to four for induction. And uh, Dr. Karnakaran, uh, you know, there are plenty of people use 
Let me fentanyl for uh, sedation also. Is there any range where, where we have to use it for sedation or uh, for uh, uh, you know, uh, intraoperative analysis? What is your normal uh, experience? Okay. Sedation is between one to two my nanograms per mil. That is, especially you're doing awake fiber optic, you know, two nanograms is more than sufficient with local anesthesia. That will, that will uh, keep them nice and comfortable. Uh, so two, one to two is more than sufficient usually. And uh, uh, you also, I, I briefly, I, somewhere I missed along. So you said uh, uh, sometimes you do use uh, at the time of extubation as well. Uh, uh, Absolutely, can you yes. just expand a little bit on that? Perfect, yeah. Um, this is an advanced technique. So I put it there for uh, deep extubation. You know, normally when you look at patients extubating, they're coughing, they're trying to pull the tube out. With remifentanyl extubation, you can avoid all that. As I said, it's a fantastic um, respiratory tube tolerant. It, it makes the tube tolerant very well. So you can uh, leave it running at 1, 1 to 1 1.5 nanogram per mil. Uh, patients will just sit there and you can, uh, they will, you call their name, they'll open their eyes. You can ask them to take a nice deep breath. They will take a breath. Uh, you can ask them to take another nice deep breath. They will do that. Then you can take the tube out very nice and comfortable. It entirely stops the coughing, bucking, patient trying to pull the tube out, all those things. Uh, one to two is a good sedation rate. Uh, the reason I'm putting a bit low for Asian population is it's a new medication in India. Uh, I really don't know how the Indian patients are going to respond. So I think it's better to be safe than sorry. And I think one to 1 1.5 is a good way to extubate, especially neurosurgery, um, you know, ENT. You don't want them to cough. Uh, this is very, very smooth way of extubating patients. We use it routinely. You leave it running between 1 to 1 1.5. Uh, patients are nice and relaxed. You ask them to open the eyes, they open. We, they will not breathe. They will just sit and look at you. You ask them to take a breath, they will take a breath. Then you deflate and you take the tube out. It's, it's an interesting experience. And I'll try to share a video. Uh, when, if a patient permits, I'll try to share a video for you. So the thing is, what would be the transitional opioid that you would like to use once the remifentanil is off? Since it has such a short contact sensitivity half time, what would you like to yeah. use? As well? So um, in India, I think you have uh, fentanyl and morphine. Is that correct, or you have fentanyl and buprenorphine? We have fentanyl, morphine, buprenorphine. All three of them. All three you have. So uh, if you are going to use fentanyl, uh, again the onset of action is quite uh, quick. So uh, three to four minutes before you switch off remifentanil, I would give the fentanyl as a small bolus. This is very good because it works for next about 25 to 30 minutes. So uh, if you put a regional block or infiltrated with local anesthesia, this is a good, uh, this is more than enough before the regional anesthesia starts working. So fentanyl is more than enough. If you think you need a longer acting, suppose you had an extensive surgery and your regional is not going to cover everything, then I would give morphine or buprenorphine. It takes time. Morphine takes about 15 minutes to actually start working well. So I would give it 15 minutes before. So morphine or buprenorphine before stopping Remy. Is that making sense? Suppose I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop Remy fentanyl 15 minutes and I'm going to, planning to give morphine. I would give the calculated dose of morphine now, wait for 10, 15 minutes, then stop the Remy so that morphine has actually started working. So if I stop Remy and give morphine at the same time, patient will be in pain. Is is that clear or? That's, that's, that's sir, clear. Uh, KK sir. Hello. Uh, 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 good evening. Sir, does evening. transitional opiates will delay the recovery? How to minimize the delay recovery? Suppose we are giving at the end of surgery, so fentanyl. Yeah. yeah. So definitely it's going to delay the recovery. So how to balance this? Sir, very unlikely because you're giving it as a bolus. Uh, let us say I give fentanyl five minutes before I'm going to stop Remy fentanyl. The peak is gone and it's uh, already coming down. So what you're going to have is a plateau effect of fentanyl. Uh, so suppose surgeon is uh, beginning to close. I am anticipating that in five to six, ten minutes, I'm going to wake the patient up. So I'm going to give the fentanyl, stop Remy fentanyl, you know, from five minutes. And I think within uh, 10 minutes, patient is going to wake up, sir. Not much delay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, can I ask I think it's one a... question with the permission of chair? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead, sir. 
yeah yeah uh, as usual uh, very lucid uh-huh. and uh, very crisp talk and the best part of uh, his talk is he summarizes every 3 minutes so <laughs> the retention is better say one other thing i would like to ask for kk is uh, uh what is your protocol for providing tiva for uh, i mean uh, pcea for labor analysis yeah, pc rather I, iv patient control inter- ah, and iv pc remittentional pca you are saying yeah for, for labor labor okay okay uh, so the dilution is bit different um so what we will give is 20 microgram oh, no, sorry 20 to 40 microgram every 2 minutes so patient has a pc so uh, just to clarify yeah. for the audience Dr. Sunil is asking about labor analgesia. This is not uh, TYTCI. He's asking about labor analgesia. So what we do there is we start with 20 micrograms every two minutes and we increase it up to 40 micrograms every two minutes. So 20 to 40 is the dose. So every two minutes. So patient has a button. When they press a button, they get a dose of PCA, just like a morphine PCA or fentanyl PCA. So remifentanyl advantage in labor is, as we already said, it's... onset is very quick and the offset is equally quick um so 20 to 40 is great the key things uh, dr sunil is uh, you should give them oxygen by nasal cannula continuous oxygen cannula continuous pulse oximetry monitoring you must uh, have one somebody even a carer is fine encourage the woman to breathe in between otherwise they start retaining co2 yeah so yeah dr so oxygen pulse oximetry encourage them to breathe in between because uh, they stop breathing uh, but it's fairly good analysis you know our someone we, we use it uh, quite frequently especially if someone where we cannot provide epidural someone has got sepsis yeah. or someone has got coagulation abnormality uh, it works it's not as effective as epidural but it's good enough to get the peak effect it takes about 3 to 4 minutes so it's not it, the it, first part, you know first dose only you will not get the effect i think 3 4 times once they use once uh, remy starts getting the peak uh, level then they start feeling that uh, important i don't i have not uh, i don't have any experience but uh, uh, there are few case reports a word of caution uh, of uh, using remy in uh, parturients there have been two cases of perimortem cesarean delivery with remy fentanyl usage because if they don't press the pca switch timely the bolus may go once the pain uh, ceases so it may cause profound respiratory depression and respiratory arrest and cardiac arrest so uh, be cautious yes as you rightly said pulse oximeter oxygen and in the presence of right anesthesiology three important right. things you you have to make sure somebody is there encouraging the woman to breathe absolutely yeah. crucial oxygen continuous initially when you start again just uh, i know audience is listening so uh, when you start there will be some fetal bleeding it's transient you have to just hold your breath uh, the bleeding will recover very quickly so better to warn your obstetrician you are starting this you know you will have one or two d cells and then it will settle down that's absolutely okay so first 10 to 15 minutes stay there till till the patient's um, thing is achieved you know the level is achieved i hope that's useful is that is it clear dr sunil absolutely yes. thank you thank you Dr. what is the use of anticholinergics and vasopressors in your practice when you're uh, having your patients on say propofol remifentanil infusion or maybe a yeah. plain fentanyl tci or a tiva whatever and would you advocate to give anticholinergics to all your patients before you start no no need definitely not this is why i'm again repeatedly saying start slow start low uh, this will give you a really good feel how your patient is going to respond uh i think all these problems especially in us i think they start very high dose uh and they get into trouble so start slow see how your patient responds then you gradually increase uh, when i last used anticholinergic very very rare very very rare extremely rare um do you need vasopressors yes uh, always keep vasopressors and especially elderly someone is on beta blockers these are the ones you will need intraop when there is surgical stimulus usually it's not a problem Uh, you remember when i said after induction when the surgeon is preparing and when you're doing a time out that time nothing is happening so this is why i said bring your remy down again at this time because if you leave it at the induction dose then you can have this problem so once tube is in you can bring it down just before the surgeon is going to start 2 minutes before night to skin go up to the that level
Is that okay? Uh, Okay, yes. one last question before we go to the next one. Somebody was asking, can the patient bear down if they have, uh, uh, if they're using, I mean, a PCA? Definitely, no problem at all. There is no numbness, nothing. They will be able to breathe properly. They just need encouragement. You know, it's like, um, like when you're doing meditation, you breathe in, you hold your breath. It's almost like that. Someone has to tell, breathe out and breathe in. That's uh, They can do everything else. No problem at all. Wonderful, Dr. KK. Uh, well, one last, one last thing. I, I know, I know. In India, people like to mix propofol, Remy, or they try to mix Remy fentanyl. Please don't mix with anything. Keep it separate. Whatever else you mix, please don't mix Remy with other things because it's uh, pharmacokinetics is very very different. As I spoke to you, keep Remy infusion separate. Thank you. We can move to next. Week. Thank okay, you. So okay. much. One last thing, which we forgot yeah. to highlight. Uh, when we talked about labor analysis here. Uh, we talked about IV PCA for labor analysis, and uh, I, I guess we, we have to make it clear that uh, this uh, remifentanil is not for neuroaxial use, and it has no. got glycine. It is contraindicated, no. and not should not be used at all. Did I did we get it right? Yes. Correct. So this is not for neuroaxial use. This is IV PCA. What Dr. Sunil asked about. It's IV PCA. So you need a PCA machine. You need to set the program. You need to have a safety protocol, and it's IV, not neuroaxial. Wonderful, Dr. KK. Thank you very much. Dr. Uh, Dr. Kal, uh, we please accept our heartfelt thanks and uh, we are really indebted to you. Thank you very much. Dr. Kalpana, can we move to the next one? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Menon is ready, then we can we can share his slides. No. Yeah, good uh, evening, what I also want to add, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Suresh Menon, one second. Uh, 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 we are very... Uh, Fortunate to, that uh, Themis Medicare have um, you now partnered with us uh, and uh, on this historic occasion where we are doing our first webinar uh, and uh, they have uh, sent one of their best, that is the medical director, uh, to be part of this webinar and uh, uh, present something which we uh, you know we all want to hear. What is this remifentanil molecule? How did they procure it? And how we can procure it in our place? And uh, little small intricacies about that. And uh, thank you, Dr. Suresh Manan, for coming out here. Uh, before handing over, I also want to highlight everyone who is there online that whatever Dr. Uh, Karunakaran uh, explained in a summary, we have put it in a small booklet and it will reach every one of you. So it will be it will act as a bedside where you have a guide with you to use what is the level I should use, how should I use it. So and hopefully it should make a significant difference in your everyday. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Subramaniam. And uh, thank you, the office bearers of IOTA uh, for having invited Themis and given us an opportunity to partner with you in your very first webinar. I must say that, you know, the talk from Dr. KK was extremely interesting. It's made my task not only easy, but also difficult because many of the slides that you would see, there would be an overlap because I was told to cover a little bit about the profile of Remy. And now at the cost of avoiding repetition, I will be quick on those slides where Dr. KK has lucidly actually explained the details of the profile of Remy. To begin with, the three therapeutic indications where Remy fentanyl is currently approved in India is for induction and maintenance of anesthesia. The second is for continuation as an analgesic into the immediate post-operative setup. Now, this could be a little difficult in India because this is supposed to be under the direct supervision of an anesthesiologist. And I'm afraid, you know, in most cases, we may not have an anesthesiologist follow the patient into the post-operative care unit. And the third, of course, where there were questions, one of the most interesting elements of remifentanil is the ability to use it for monitored anesthesia care, considering its unique pharmacokinetic profile. As rightly mentioned, it's currently available in India and only in two dosage forms, one milligram and two milligrams. We had Dr. Thomas Snyder recently visit us as part of a lecture series in December. And one of the things he told me was that, you know, Remy fentanyl could possibly be a molecule which possibly has one of the best PKs of pharmacokinetics he's ever seen across therapeutic domains. As mentioned, it's a pure mu agonist and it's got very little binding to the other, you know, opioid receptors. 
The active metabolite, it's eliminated by the kidney, but as Dr. KK mentioned, it is about 1,000 times less potent than the parent remifentanil, and because of which it can easily be used without any dosage modifications in patients with renal impairment. This is a slide which quickly explains the metabolism of remifentanil. It's done by what we call as non-specific esterases, and it's usually by hydrolysis. The beauty is the inactive remifentanil acid, as you see, is more than 4,000-fold less potent as compared to the parent remifentanil. A quick comparison, which Dr. KK alluded to, I'll focus on the onset of action. Fentanyl is a couple of minutes. This is seconds. The time taken to achieve peak levels in plasma is around three to four minutes. In Remy, it's still lower. As you see, fentanyl gets metabolized via the liver. This is predominantly through the kidney. And if you look at the half-life, it's again about three to four hours for fentanyl. And I have a slide which Dr. KK alluded to, the context-sensitive half-life, which makes it possible for a fast offset with a half-life only less than 10 minutes. This is a slide about the onset of effect, which I alluded to in the previous slide. Both or most of these opioid analgesics do act pretty fast, but I think Remy fentanyl sets off the block faster than fentanyl and the other opioid analgesics. This is again a slide which shows you that Remy fentanyl achieves steady state, as we call it, the earliest as compared to the other opioid analgesics. The blue graph is for Remy fentanyl, and within a matter of minutes, it reaches its steady state, which we call it the same level at which it maintains in the bloodstream, as compared to alfentanyl and fentanyl, which takes a long time. And if you see the graph on fentanyl, it's yet to reach steady state. It's, the concentration still seems to increase even after about 10 hours of uh, the dose. This is the context-sensitive half-life, which Dr. KK referred to. And in my slide, very similar to what he showed, the yellow, bar, the yellow dotted lines at the bottom show that despite remifentanil infusion being continued for a duration of 600 minutes, that's roughly 10 hours, you find that the blood concentration decreases to about 50% in about three to six minutes, and it's completely washed off the system within about 10 minutes. So there's no accumulation despite a prolonged infusion. And this is the comparative uh, table, and I'll focus on the bottom of the slide, on the context-sensitive half-life. It's about three minutes for remifentanil as compared to close to two hours for fentanyl. Now, the whole reason, this is a slide I actually picked from Dr. Snyder's presentation. And as I told you, he's a big fan of remifentanil. And the advantage, which... Dr. KK also referred to, is the ability to have a patient who is fully awake and where you are able to easily extubate the patient despite the length of the surgery. And this, as again, to repeat what Dr. KK said, this would be useful across surgical domains. The pharmacodynamics or the potency, honestly, there is nothing much to be compared. All of them are equally potent, especially when you compare remifentanil and fentanyl. The differentiation is primarily because of the pharmacokinetics. On the potency and you know pharmacodynamic front, there's very little to choose between fentanyl and remifentanil. This is the dosage, which of course, I'm not going into any details because this was explained very, very lucidly by Dr. KK. You give a bolus, though, as he rightly said, the word bolus is a misnomer. What experts have made us understand is that, you know, this should be given or mentioned as a starting dose because the bolus is slow IV. And if, if you look at the chart, it says very clearly that it needs to be given over a period of 30 to 60 seconds by which you are able to avoid the two potential side effects or adverse events which Dr. KK mentioned one of bradycardia and the other of, uh, you know, apnea or respiratory depression. Obviously, some experts did ask us about the incidence of chest wall muscle rigidity. And that again can be completely negated if you provide the bolus, uh, the bolus slow IV over 30 seconds. The infusion, of course, you can continue with rates as you deem fit. 
starting with low doses, not only 0 0.05, as you see on the slide, but even lower than that of 0 0.025, and then slowly titrating it upwards, the way Dr. KK uh, alluded to in his presentation. Some of the undesirable effects, as you see, though this is listed based on the prescribing information, Dr. Snider, for example, who was asked this question repeatedly during his talks in India, said he's yet to experience a single case of skeletal muscle vigility. But of course, as Dr. KK rightly mentioned, you must be on the lookout for bradycardia, even certain some cases of hypotension, and obviously acute respiratory depression and apnea. Again, the advice is you stop remifentanil infusion and within a matter of one or two minutes, the patient reverses. Or of course, as was mentioned earlier, you have the choice of using naloxone if so required. This is something which uh, I think uh, Dr. Subramaniam alluded to, and it's very correct. Because it contains glycine, it's contraindicated for you know, spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia. Finally, one or two slides to compare between the standard of care in India currently as far as opioid analgesics go, fentanyl, as compared to Remy. If you see the onset of action, 30 seconds versus 1 to 2 minutes. The maximum concentration achieved in a minute. Metabolism is by non-specific tissue esterases, while predominantly for fentanyl is the liver. The terminal half-life is 9 minutes versus a couple of hours for fentanyl. The context sensitive half-life again is just 3 minutes as compared to close to 2 hours for fentanyl. There is no dosage requirements which are required for renally or hepatically impaired patients. The overall hemodynamic stability, whether it's pulse rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate is much superior as compared to fentanyl. And obviously because of the fast offset, as was mentioned earlier, for remifentanyl demonstrates faster induction and emergence. When you look at pharmacoeconomically also, the use of both the hypnotic agent, which is most commonly used, of course, is propofol, or even of neuromuscular blockers, that's reduced appreciably. And there's a fair amount of literature to support that as compared to fentanyl. And as KK, Dr. KK uh, did allude to, pharmacoeconomically, again, it leads to lower times or reducing the length of surgery, length of ICU stay, length of hospital, hospital stay, etc. It's of great use when you can use it for patients who are undergoing daycare surgeries, manage anesthesia care, for example, endoscopies, MRIs, cath lab procedures, etc. And again, when you come to guidelines, it's listed in the ERAS 2019 guidelines to be the opioid of choice. And of course, as we know, uh, in the US, it was introduced somewhere in the late 90s. And over the last 25 years that it has been in, uh, in clinical practice, more than 90% of the opioid analgesic use, I'm told in the US and in most of Europe, and advanced markets is all remifentanil as compared to fentanyl. And this is my last slide, uh, salient features again, which uh, is partly a repetition of what Dr. KK covered earlier. Efficacious across surgery types in broad spectrum of patients, both adults and pediatrics. In the pediatric age group, the only recommendation is to avoid use in induction while you can use it in maintenance. Efficacious either for TIVA or for balanced anesthesia, fast onset, offset, ease of titration, very effective in attenuating hemodynamic, autonomic, and somatic intraoperative responses, no clinically relevant effects on either IOPs or ICPs, no clinically relevant effects of, on cerebral blood flow or on any other cognitive function, lesser adverse events as compared to other opioids. So finally, this is the presentation with which Remifentanil is currently launched by Themis in India. The brand name is Remithem and it's available either as a 1 milligram vial or a 2 milligram vial. Obviously, what you see on the slide, the cost is the MRP, which can possibly be billed at the patient level. But what the hospitals will get is a much lower price than this. And obviously, bulk purchases would attract bigger discounts. But the MRP or the maximum retail price that can be charged is what you see on the slide. And as uh, again, Dr. KK rightly mentioned, approximately for a one hour surgery, what you require is a one milligram vial. And for a two hour surgery, it could be a two milligram vial. That's the kind of 
approximate thumb rule. And finally, the support from Themis. Well, considering the need, because when we did a survey prior to the launch, we were made to understand that most centers in India did, were not using TCI pumps, including the major corporate hospitals. You could literally count them on your fingertips. So we decided that, you know, as a part of our uh, patient-centric approach while launching Remifentanil, and you would have seen from Dr. KK's presentation, the value of uh, administering Remifentanil using the TCI pump, we would be installing these TCI pumps at all hospitals which would request us for the same. So what we require is a request letter from the hospital, an agreement between Themis and the Institute for TCI pump installation. From the date of agreement, the usual delivery timeline, we have been told by the pump manufacturers, is anywhere between four to six weeks. But we have already placed some orders. So honestly, in some cases, we may be able to, you know, meet that commitment earlier than the deadline indicated on the slide. And the maintenance obviously will be managed by the TCI pump manufacturer through Themis. We also have actually put in place a video on the use of Remifentanil, both using the TCI as well as the manual infusion pump. So this is available and, you know, with one of the uh, anesthesia experts from India, uh, exactly the way Dr. KK explained. But what we have done is we have actually shot this video in an OT setup where it has been demonstrated how you can, how you need to reconstitute it initially, then dilute it to 50 mics per ml, as Dr. KK mentioned, and then infuse it either through a manual infusion pump or a target control infusion pump. Also, for making Remifentanil available in each of these institutes, as most of the uh, leading anesthesiologists would know, we require Remifentanil to be initially added to the narcotic license which the institute has. In addition, for us, the stockists who supply the hospitals with Remifentanil also need to have a narcotic license. And in, depending upon the state, there are state-to-state -state variations, they also require in some cases a transport permit for transporting the Remifentanil from the stockist to the hospital. But our field force is well trained on the above. I think of the approximately 700 odd hospitals which do have narcotic licenses and the ability to use products like fentanyl and remifentanyl, or more, more than 60-70% of them have been already covered. But in case there are institutes and there are anesthesiologists attending this meeting from these hospitals, in case you would want to procure uh, remifentanyl, we have got our Themis field force who are well trained in the process to make that happen pretty quickly. And as I said, you know, though the prices I mentioned on the previous slide were the maximum retail price, there are special prices on, on bulk purchases to hospitals. Thank you very much again for a very patient hearing. And thank you, Ayata, once again, for giving Themis the opportunity to be a part of the inaugural webinar. Thank you, Dr. Suresh Menon. Uh, it, uh... It was a very lucid and a lot of interesting things you have mentioned. I'm pretty sure uh, people will contact you. If they have to contact you, is there any contact uh, uh, you know, where they can uh, ask for uh, more information? Uh, any number you want to share with us? Well, uh, we have got our website, which is uh -huh. there. Otherwise, I think most of these hospitals, uh, Dr. Subramaniam, which have these narcotic licenses are known to us. And by now, our field force would have, you know, approached these hospitals. Okay, so I don't think, I mean, there should be a problem in connecting with us. I mean, the outside chance is that in case somebody is not able to locate a Themis representative, you know, the association can let me know. And I sure. will, you know, connect the members to the right people in those respective markets. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for coming uh, to this webinar and uh, sharing uh, some very useful information. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, My pleasure. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kalpana, is there any other thing uh, which uh, we, 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 you want to... Uh, uh... Yes, that we, have share, we would be sharing the uh, Google link for the forms for the membership, which I would like to urge, and I'm sure even you would like to tell the same, to urge the mem uh, people to become a member of the TYTCI Association. Thank you, Dr. Kalpana. Uh, now, uh, 
uh, as I was uh, alluding to before, uh, that uh, quite a few of us from all over the country have got together. We have started this association, and uh, uh, this is the website iota.in. Uh, please do visit. There are uh, content is being added every day. Uh, there are some very very useful links about how to use TCI, how to use uh, you know uh, various drugs. What, how to use uh, you know, uh, uh, the depth of anesthesia monitoring, what it means, all those things are there in the uh, in additional links and resources. Uh, along with that, we would really love to have you uh, with us as members. So the Google Forms will be shared with each one of you. Uh, uh, you, you know, Think about it. Uh, as a member, you can do a lot, and we can learn together a lot more than uh, what individuals alone can learn. Thank you. Uh, and I, uh, the next part is you know, thanking all the people. Um, we have our own uh, no, uh, icon with us, Dr. Tushar Choksi. I will hand over uh, the stage to Dr. Tushar Choksi for uh, you know, uh, presenting the oath of thanks. And uh, Kalpana, it was a wonderful webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Subramaniam. Ladies and gentlemen, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Karuna Karan from Doha for delivering an exceptional webinar on Ramifentanil, shedding light on its intricacies and significance in the Indian, con Indian context. The IOTAS bioneural webinar was enriched by the Karuna Karan's signif uh, significant and insight insightful presentation. I would also like to express our sincere appreciation to all the esteemed founder member of the IOTA whose vision and dedication have been instrumental in shaping this community. Our gratitude extends to every member who actively participated, contributing to the success of this webinar. A special acknowledgement goes to Themis Pharma for their generous sponsorship and information enabling us to bring this informative session to our audience. We are also grateful to NSCSIA TV for their role in broadcasting this webinar across various social media platforms reaching a wide audience and amplifying its impact. Last but not least, a warm thank you to our diverse audience across all channels. Your engagement and enthusiasm have truly made this webinar a collaborative and enriching experience. Thank you once again for all valuable contributors making this event a resounding success. We look forward to, forward to future endeavors in advancing knowledge and collaborative within the IOTA community. Thank you once again. Thank you, Dr. Tushar, and uh, we hope to meet once again. On the 17th, we are hosting a, a webinar with the Association, Indian Association of Pediatric Anesthesiologists. The details of the same would be shared to all of you all. Please do join us in large numbers, and let us make this a great success. Tiba TCI has got a good beginning, thanks to all of you all, and uh, let's hope to meet on the 17th. So, uh, good evening to everybody, and have a pleasant night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. See you. Thank you. Thank you. See you all. Bye. Bye.